53 miles now. Well, these appear to be heading uh, directly at us. I'm coming toward steady up uh, 150 for 33 hours. Okay, let's go back inside. Let's just fly the plane from the inside out. Steal the aircraft. And you reduce throttle when you're gonna turn. And of course you look where you're going before you start turning, just in case of other aircraft. My router pedals are very sensitive, so I'm just trying to keep it metal. Center. And K to slow down and stop right in front of the runway. That's where you are and that's where you should be. And you're going to go over another checklist. It's a very short one, so... And just ask for clearance again. T and number five. Glass one two, ready for departure. Glass one two, AME Tower, you are cleared for takeoff. Runway two zero right. Okay, we're ready to go. So here you will check your trim again. So that is all the way up. I will do about 10 to 15 degrees nose up. And double check or make sure that your radar is on. So right now it's on. And you're ready to taxi onto the runway. Double check. It's clear. Ready to follow the yellow line. Glass 1-2, AME Tower, expedite departure. So they tell us to take off as soon as possible because I was telling you guys how to do it. So you're going to stop here one second. Okay, so let me tell you what we're going to do for takeoff. We're going to power all the way up, full afterburner. Then we're going to, at 70 knots, we'll disengage our nose wheel with shift slash again and around 150 knots we're gonna start to rotate try to maintain your nose below 15 degrees so you'll scrape your afterburner nozzles and when you're airborne you will tap your brakes to stop the wheels from turning and when the runway is gone underneath you or is over, we'll raise our landing gear with G. So now let me show you how we're going to do that. Pull off the burner, steer with your rudder pedals over your rudder, very sensitive. Start pulling out. Glass 1-2, AME Tower, support heading 005. Gear up. Zero, zero, Glass 1, nose red. And you're airborne. Keep in mind, everything that you do will give or take points against you. This points count stores your rank, and if you want to be captain someday, be patient and do what you are told. Okay, here we are, and you are airborne. So let's talk about your INS or inertial navigation system. The nav is your default mode. If you follow your flight plan. Here you can see the steps or steer points of your entire mission. Your takeoff 
will be steer point number one so that's what is selected there I haven't changed it and number two will be the first turn on your mission the F-16 will display the steering cues in your HUD we'll talk about all this in a little bit and in your right MFT now you will select your assigned steer point with the arrows on your ICP or integrated control panel if you click that one the steer point will go up now you can see is two or you can do it with the S you can see the number change it four five six seven eight nine and going back to two and if you want to go back to the previous select point you just click the arrow underneath on your ICP and it will go down or just use your keyboard and it will be shift plus S and it will go back in case you need to retrace your steps so that's how you change your cues and steer points with your ICP now if you look up to your right to your DD or data enter display this is your default screen we told you the steel port number the clock and some other information now if you go to your ICP and click number four which is STPT with steer point as soon as you click it you will come to this screen now you can see more information about your steer point the one that you have selected it's number two your latitude, your longitude, your elevation, 500 feet, and the TOS or time over steer point. So you should be there at 9:23. Now, if you look up here to your HUD, you have also information about your steer point. If you look to the right, right there. Let me up there you go right there here you can see three lines the top line the BO 44.2345 is the exact distance in nautical miles to the selected steer point in this case is 45 nautical miles the middle one is the ETE or estimated time in route is the time in minutes and seconds to the selected steer point in this case 532 and the bottom line is a rounded distance to the selected steer point in this case is 50 nautical miles to selected point number two now let's back up and see where we are on the right MFD right there we have actually selected steer point number two but I think that's number three so let me just that is actually select point number four right there and you know that is select point number four because it's blinking so we are about to start turning to get into the select point number five so let me turn the jet real quick so I can explain to you better how this works.